Hello and welcome to Art Tip Tuesday. Hi, I'm Sam and my aim is to help other pencil artists to grow in skills and confidence and to feel the benefits that regular creative practice has on health and well-being. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a question that I get asked quite often and that's all about picking colours and how to choose the exact right colour for a certain type of drawing. Now when I started out in coloured pencils about five or six years ago, I think I was quite lucky because actually it wasn't as popular as it is now and there weren't as many things on the market that can become quite overwhelming. There's just so much choice out there, it can be difficult to know which way to turn and that can sometimes even stop you in your tracks and you feel that you're looking for the next best thing or if I have this certain pencil, or certain brand or certain colour, then my drawings are gonna to move to the next level. And I actually have mixed feelings about this because although I definitely think that there does come a time when you are using possibly um, less quality materials and you might become frustrated with what they can achieve, for example, if you've got a paper that is very, very grainy or very thin, then there's only a certain amount that you can do with the pencils or the paper that you are using that aren't going to let you achieve the results that you're really looking for. So when I started out in coloured pencils, I, I think I watched a few videos on YouTube and I saw some artists achieve these amazing things with these pencils that I just were that I assumed, and I've heard this many times since, for children. Um, and so I thought what I would do is I had a limited budget. I had very, very young children, had limited time, limited space. And so what I thought was I'd go for a paper that was more expensive than the normal cartridge paper that you might be using that was very thin. And I knew I wouldn't get the results I wanted with that or the sketchbook that I had. So I went to my local hobby craft and I went for a make that I was really familiar with. In my case, it was the Dana Rowney. And I went for a thick and a smooth paper. So I thought I would try that. It felt really nice and thick and it had a little bit of texture, but not too much. And the pencils I went for were the Faber-Castell Polychromos because I'd heard everybody talk about them on YouTube, on Instagram, um, on Facebook. And I thought, well, you know, I might as well because I got a feeling I'm going to enjoy these. They ticked every box for me. You could get detail, you could have control. And so I bought the biggest set that I could afford at the time, which was a 36 set. And they'd done their job. They picked out a good range of colors that I could use. And I actually used just these 36 pencils for almost a year. Um, and that sounds quite bonkers now because I hear so many people saying, well, I, you know, I've tried these and I've tried these and I've got a set of these and these, and that's fantastic. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But I do think that it sets you at a little bit of a disadvantage because you don't actually really get to know your pencils that well. I had 36 pencils and I used them down to the point, down to the end. And so by the end of that, um, and once I'd used ones, I kind of filled, topped them up at Hobbycraft, at my local Hobbycraft, you could buy them open stock and it was really exciting to see them all in their little cases and you could feel, you could even try one out if you wanted to. So I gradually just uh, filled the ones I'd used, but I had this, these 36 colours and some of them I didn't even use. I picked reference photos that I thought were interesting, that were going to spark my interest and keep me going. And that, that's what I did. So I uh, drew a kingfisher, I drew a robin, um, I started to work on commissions, pet portraits and that kind of thing. And then what happened was I started to notice there was a little bit of a gap. I don't think I realised that there was 120 colours in the Faber-Castell Polychromo set. So I gradually started pulling in colours that I possibly wanted and then really got to know those colours as well. Um, I didn't buy another set, um, even though they started kind of creeping into my um, peripheral mindset or vision. I stuck with the Faber-Castell polychromos and I really got to know them very well. And I think this has actually set me in good stead because now I know them. Um, I really love them. I haven't gone off them at all. They're great for detail. They do blend really well. They're good quality and there is an enormous amount of colours to choose from. And once I got to know my polychromos really well, then I could start to see that there might be some gaps in either the consistency, as in the blending, or that the colour just wasn't right. And 
a lot of that was experimenting, you know, take swatches, write them down, work with them together, try a few colours together, experiment, have fun. Um, there's no real right or wrong answer when it comes to picking colours. We all see colour very differently anyway, and also colour is perceived by the colour next to it. So that can be um, a, a game changer when it comes to picking colours, the light that's involved, whether you've printed it off of your computer and, and what inks are used. So the only time that I think actual specific colours for um, from someone else's perspective is when you're actually doing commissions. So it's somebody's pet and they know them inside and out and they know the colours, in which case you might need to ask for a few reference photos um, in different lights so you can gauge a really good understanding of the colours. You'll tend to find that you'll get to know certain animals and what colours that they ha they tend to have. Um, for, for example, uh, brown Labradors, you know the colour of their eyes that they generally have. There's always going to be some exceptions to that, but um, as a general rule, they've got those lovely burnt siennas and lovely browns. So I think there's something to be said about possibly sticking to one or two brands to begin with, if you're just starting out, before you get that kind of shiny object syndrome, that kind of magpie syndrome, where you just see all of these different things out there and you want a piece of all of them because you think that that might be the magic answer that you're looking for with a certain technique. I would really go deep into the colours that you've got, into the brand that you've got, whether that's Arteza, Prismacolor, uh, the Polychromos, whatever the brand is, really get to know them well. There are apps out there that can help you choose colours. Um, you can actually download something that you can hover over and it will you tell you which brand you're using and it will show you the exact colour that is coming up. Um, but I don't think you need it. I think we put an awful amount of pressure on ourselves to get it perfect, to get it right. And actually perfection can stop you in its tracks. There's no such thing as perfection. And I think you end up losing the joy of why you're doing it when you put so much pressure on yourself to get it right. Um, there's no right. It's your perception. If, if you wanted to draw a dog bright blue or bright purple, it would still look real because it's actually more about the values. I've you hear people say this all the time, values are more important than picking the perfect colour. And it's so, so true. Going as dark as you need to go in your shadows and making sure the highlights are nice and bright, having those graduations between the values as well. You'll also find that you might start a drawing and you pick a certain amount of colours and you use them in a certain order. And then you do the next bit, which is very, very similar, in a completely different order and add a few more colours. And you probably to the, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So how important is it actually to pick the perfect colour? I think we all have our favourite colours. We tend to graduate towards them and then we forget the other ones that we've got. And every now and again, I'll find a colour and I think, oh my goodness, you know, I've forgotten I had this one. This would be really great for this section of the drawing. But actually, I probably use my favourites all of the time, which are um, dark sepia, I think that's amazing. The nugget, I tend to lean towards quite a lot. The greys in the polychromos, the colds and the warms, and then into the, the Payne's grey. I have never used my bronze, copper, silver and gold. And keep, keep looking out for something I can use that in, but actually I've never used it. And then what I found was when I got to know my polychromos really well, I started to think about if there was something slightly missing as to do with blending. Luminance are beautifully beautiful to blend and I was looking at doing skin tones and because they are softer, they blended even better and they've got these lovely percentages in the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils, which are beautiful and they complement the polychromos fantastically. I then added a few Pablos because there I heard of some really good colors that you just can't get with the polychromos like Coco, uh, Granite Rose, and some really lovely bluey greys, like the steel greys and the pale bluish or something like bluish pale, that are just perfect for those gaps that the polychromos have, possibly. But you wouldn't know about these gaps unless you've got to know your coloured pencils really well. So it doesn't mean that you have to go out and buy Faber-Castell polychromos. 
get to know the ones that you're using, really enjoy using them, working out what they can do. The Arteza range, which are really good value, are beautifully pigmented and they've got some really delicious sounding colours. Uh, they're fantastic as well. I've heard, I've never tried the Prisma colours because I went straight into the uh, polychromos, but I've heard some great things about the Prisma colours. I think they're softer too. And so the blending on those is brilliant. So I think my top tip for picking colours is to get to know your colours really well play with them experiment with them have fun really get to know them before you move on to another set and then you become overwhelmed because you can't remember which color goes with what i think for me it was luck because there weren't as many out there or i didn't actually look for them so i'd only heard of, of, of the polychromos and so i had the privilege i suppose of not being overwhelmed early on in my journey which is so easy for you to do since using coloured pencils, I've heard of, oh gosh, it's got to be into the hundreds now, different colours, different sets. And I can see how that could be a little bit overwhelming. I have made a list of the colours or the, the most common colours that I use. But again, that's just from my point of view. You could be completely different and see colours differently. And that's what's so exciting about being an artist, I think, and taking the pressure off yourself and enjoying it. You need to remember why you started coloured pencils in the first place. It wasn't to have an enormous amount of pressure put on yourself. It wasn't to pick holes in your art. It was to do something that you enjoyed, that you love, that you can keep working with. And so gradually move on to different sets and different colours and add them in. The coloured pencil shop are amazing. They do open stock. And Emma Kerridge there has created some PDFs that you can swatch and fill in, which are great fun to do. And I think you'll really start to work out how beautiful these pencils are. Don't get too caught up in the pressures and the perfection. I would love to know your opinion on this. I think my stance is definitely to enjoy it and not be too bombarded with all of the different options that are out there. You don't need to spend an enormous amount of money to be able to create beautiful artwork. So I hope this helps. Um, go and have fun, be creative, and I really look forward to seeing you next time. If you did enjoy the video, it would be fantastic if you could like and subscribe to support this channel, and I really look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.